We are talking today about effective widgets. And in particular, we are thinking about these widgets because we have uh, had a student panel and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So what happened was we wanted to be able to capture student voices. So we put out a survey so that students could type their answers. I offered the opportunity that I would interview people if they wanted to be able to talk about it uh, personally. And then we also had some student voices panels as part of this lunch and learn series. It was really wonderful to be able to hear those student voices and they focused in on how instructors uh, work to connect with them or how their instructors might have helped them with some difficult topics in their content. And then we also looked at how instructors use D2L tools that students found to be particularly effective. One of the ones that they talked about was being able to have access to resources. So we did have a lunch and learn that talked about all the different kinds of resources that can be available, but now we also want to be able to talk about widgets that help with that ease of access to those resources as a D2L tool to help, help support your students. I am your host. I'm Laura Thompson. Here's my contact information in case you have any questions that rise up later and we'll be able to get into this session. So we do have an agenda for today. We're going to talk about what is a widget, why widgets, and how do I use a widget? So we're trying to look at the what, the why, and the how. So this, the Providing that what and why will help you a little bit more with the context of that usefulness of the widget and maybe help inspire some, uh, some new thoughts for you about uh, creative widgets you might use. So what is a widget? These words come straight from Brightspace, that's D2L. Widgets are, they're building blocks of your home pages. So when you create those widgets or you can edit them, you can customize them, you can preview them to see what they look like. These are those little tiles that you see on your homepage. And there's two types of them. There's system widgets and custom widgets. So the system widgets are provided by D2L or by Delaware Tech. The custom widgets are ones that you can actually create yourself. But just in case you're saying, Laura, I still don't get what a widget is. I wanted to show you some images so that you could get that idea. So this is a picture of the homepage for IDT G01, a course that I teach. This is what it looks like in case you're unfamiliar with that word widgets. So this section here that we have announcements, that's a widget. So that comes custom on your pages, but you might not have known that that was actually a widget. Here's one that I added that was an instructor info widget. You can see there's a CCIT events widget under there. So I kind of blew those up so that you could see them better. Those are the tiles that are on the side of your homepage. And there, here's another example of one that you can create where it can link directly into some of the content in your course. So what is a widget? It's an easy way for students to be able to access information in that course in this online environment. So why use a widget? We want to use widgets because it helps directly connect students to information. For instance, as I just showed you, your announcements, those, that is a widget. Right now, you might use the tools to create announcements. It's automatically populated for you because that exists there. So that's a really nice way to be able to use those widgets. You can also create ones that are the instructor content information, link it directly to content within your course, and help, to help directly link students to college resources. Because there may be some questions that your students ask you and you don't feel like you're the expert in that area. But by providing those direct links to that information, you help support your students. And you might find that you get several questions about one particular resource. So you go ahead and you create a widget to help facilitate that con connection for your students. Here's that example, just one more time showing you, here's a sample announcement, that's one of your widgets. Here's sample instructor contact. You'll see in this one that I created, it's personalized. I've got my little bitmoji there, I've got my name, I've got my email there. And in this one, I've been able to provide links on the image, on the words, and so that they can email me directly from this widget as well. 
In this one, this is a little more generalized. This is one that can be used. This is from a, a dev shell. So this is from that course shell and it can be used to contact the instructor. Both of these though, they actually have links that go to the instructor page, the instructor information page within the course. The value of that is that students can get to that information easily to know if, if you've provided your phone number, email, your contact hours, your student office hours, things like that. They can get that information at their fingertips. And by the way, if you haven't used the template yet, an HTML template yet for your instructor information page, if you've heard of them, but haven't used them, or if you're saying, Laura, what is that? Don't worry, we do have resources for you to help you use those as template pages. The value is they're quite lovely actually. And they're a nice way to be able to provide all that information at student fingertips. If you have questions about that, pop it in the chat or stick around after this session. I'll show you more about those temps. Deborah, I just saw you unmuted. Did you have a question real quick? No, not right now. Thank you. Okay. You can also link directly to content within the course. So you can add a widget that's a work to do widget. And we'll talk more about the work to do widget, but you'll see that there's the list of the assignments. When I see my work to do widget, I can click directly on that and get to that particular assignment or reading that's available for me. I might also create ones. For instance, this middle one is an English department resource so the students can get directly to a page that offers them information about how to cite appropriately in APA. So I'm linking them directly to pages within my course. Or here's a link to the course schedule, to that course schedule. The value of that is there are templates again, remember I mentioned those HTML templates already, that for instance, it's a page that has a table. I create my schedule in that table and there are three columns. There's a date column, there's an assignments column, there's a quizzes or homework assignment, or I'm sorry, reading content column, and then there's the quizzes or the homework assignments, things that need to be completed for instance, in the template. I can add direct links into my course schedule to help students navigate. Now I have heard some faculty say, but the students should be able to, they, they should have to figure it out. They have to figure out how to navigate that course. I don't need to provide all those links. I do want you to think for just a second though. Are you trying to assess how well the students can navigate your course? Is that your goal and your objective? Or is it, do they understand what you're trying to teach them in that topic so they can have continued success as they move on in the college? So really, if you think about it philosophically, providing those links in that course schedule or in other areas of your course build are really a valuable way to reduce the cognitive load of students finding where to go so that they can spend that energy of thinking on the content that you're trying to teach them. And then we can also link directly to those college resources. Here are two widgets that will come for your students. You don't have to build these, but I did want to point them out so that you know that they exist there. One of them is the Learning with Technology widget. This is a course that has been built for students and it links them directly to another course then. They can engage in this course to get a lot of help with D2L, for instance, but also some things more specifically. How do they upload an assignment? Or how do they recognize uh, how to find their courses? Information that they might ask you that you might not feel the expert in helping them navigate that. But you can refer them to the widget that they have. So I want to make sure that you were aware of it. The other one that's in here is the Brightspace support. That's D2L support. So you can see that there's a phone number there that they can call. And when they click where it says find answers, it will take them to the website so that they can chat directly or they can submit a ticket. The value of this link is because when they have questions about D2L, now these are the ones that they, they can't get an assignment to upload into their ePortfolio, which we've seen recently some students might struggle with that or they might have issues with uh, maybe being able to um, do some other task that's D2L related. If it's a content question, a link doesn't quite work for them. They probably should direct that question to the instructor first because maybe the instructor needs to update the link. We've all been there, that's all needed to happen. The other value about this Brightspace support though is it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
So at four in the morning, when they have a question about D2L, they might send it to you, but they're going to have to wait until you get to the question. They can go straight to D2L at four in the morning and get help. So that's something that you can offer to your students. I'm gonna check the chat <laughs> real quickly. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Carrie Ann. She put in um, a reference guide information about HTML templates. Thank you so much. All right, we'll go ahead and keep moving on. So now, how do I use widgets? Well, let's go to D2L to be able to really look at this. Here is my home page in my uh, sandbox. So I'm just giving you this as an example. You can see the widgets that are on my screen. I have an announcements widget. I built one to directly link to my Zoom sessions. And um, you can see this is kind of the layout for uh, widgets. So one of the things that we want to do is be able to create that widget. When I was looking at that how-to though, we have other resources that tell you how to create an instructor information widget or how to create a Zoom session widget. And I'm going to give you links, direct links to those resources. So today, because we're really focusing on those student voices as well, I wanna help you see how you can create a link, a widget, especially to tutoring supports. So let's create a widget that looks like that. On your home page, when you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see these three dots. Those are often referred to as the more dots, or I like to call them a sideways snowman sometimes because it's whimsical and fun. So if we click there on this more section, we'll see manage home pages, edit this home page, and remove the banner. We want to go to manage home pages. Now we have choices. At the top, it's very uh, small, but we have home, home pages and widgets as our choices. We're creating a widget, so we're going to click on widgets, but we'll come back to this home pages section. So click on widgets, and now you'll see I've actually built several widgets or I've borrowed several widgets from other people, that is possible. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a widget. In the properties, we need to name the widget. If I go straight to the content so that I can build my widget, it says, no, you have to name it. You have to name it first. Virtual tutoring supports. There's a description section. This description is just for you. The reason you might use this description is for instance, if you were providing a widget that gave supports to Psychology 101 versus Psychology 201, maybe there's different levels and you'd need to know that. For our virtual tutoring supports, we don't need to have levels, but I'm going to show you. This is for my eyes only. Only the instructor is going to see it, but it gives you more information and you'll get to see how that looks in just a minute. We'll move over to content. You see, I have my choices at the top. We'll move to content. And when we're into content, now you'll see this looks a lot like the regular editor that you typically use. We wanna be able to create in this editor. So I'm just going to click and I wanna make this welcoming for uh, students. And I wanna say something like this. Sometimes we all need a little help. And so this, this is how um, we can say this. Uh, to access yours, visit virtual tutoring supports. So now I have some words. I can always edit this a little bit, make it a heading. I can make it, maybe I can say, oh, that's a little big. Maybe I want it a little bit smaller. I can make sure that this stays as a paragraph. I can do all kinds of things with that. I'm going to actually center mine because I kind of like it when things are centered uh, sometimes. And for this one, I like it centered. My instructor information page I, uh, widget, I had it uh, justified on the side. So you can decide which one you like. Then what I did actually is I went to the virtual um, tutoring support, the virtual supports page. And I looked at virtual tutoring support and I took a screenshot of this information with the hours because I think it's also valuable to be able to add the hours. Now I've already uploaded that, but if you do need help knowing how to upload an image, let me know after this lunch and learn or uh, send me a message and I'll get you some of those supports. So I'm gonna go into course offering because I've been here already and I know that I labeled it with a V so it's towards the bottom. I have to click this little checkbox to put it in. 
And I always provide this alt text. The alt text is supposed to help a student who doesn't see that image understand what's in the image. So what I did is the reason this was highlighted is because when I was practicing, I copied the text that was there and I put it directly into my alt text with a paste. I click OK. Now you'll see that my picture shows up. Now I also want to be able to provide them with a direct link. I've been able to look up the direct link. So I'm going to be able to copy that. Then I can put the direct link in there as well in case I feel that that's, that's what we need. When I get there, I, I'm going to add one more thing just because I want to make it really personable. I created a Bitmoji and I already did put that in here as well, just because I think it helps with us recognize it. It makes it a little softer for students. I, I always label my Bitmojis instead of saying that they're um, decorative, just to say, um, need help, boa around person. And now we see that I've added this little image that talks about sometimes we need a little help. And we have these images. I can save it. When I save it, I can do a little preview and this shows me what it will look like. So I can decide if I'm happy with it. Um, when I, and I can say, okay, well, I, I wanna add just a little bit more here too. I'm going to add a direct link here as well. This direct link, this information here I want to add that to some other places because I want them to, when they click on these words, this virtual tutoring supports, and I'm going to click the little chain here to add that link. I'm going to go to the URL. I'm going to click here in this URL and I want it to open in a new window. I'm going to make sure it does that. I'm going to insert. I add a lot of links to mine because if they click on that picture, I want it to work. I want to make this easy for the students. So it's going to the same place. But I'm just making sure that it's in a few in a few places so that if they're not um, exact on their click, it still gets them where I want them to go. So now I've actually linked everything on here. This is going to be pretty easy for them. When you've finished, then you can um, click save and close. Now there's one more step that we need to accomplish here. We're going to go to our home pages, and that's at the top. We have widgets and then home pages. And now we actually need to create that home page. I'm going to go a little quickly here, but the resources that I'm going to give you at the end of this will focus more on that home page. But I was trying to focus on the widget for you, so that's why I'm going to go a little bit quickly. But if you need more information, stick around for um, after the lunch and learn, or send me some send me an email. All right, so we'll go to create a home page. We have to name it. Again, this description is for you. You decide if you need it. Skip this information in the middle. We're gonna to go to this basic layout though. I do wanna show you this. If I click here, I can choose different layouts. But you'll notice, for instance, in this dev shell, this is what the basic layout looks like. We have this large place. That's usually where your announcements are. Then we have side, uh, information where we can put some smaller widgets like the one we just built. So this is what the basic one looks like live. When we go here, you do have other choices, but I wanted to point out, for instance, this one, I thought, hey, this one's pretty cool because I can put my little widgets in there in the middle, got a couple of large panels. But if I click on this one that has three things in there, or this one that has three things in there, it's going to tell me, hey, wait, if your students are on a phone, or maybe even on a tablet, it's not going to display exactly right for them. And a lot of your students in reality are accessing on their phone. So this might not be the best layout, even though I thought, oh, this would be great. I could put my little widgets there. They'd be easy right there next to each other. But you can choose uh, one of these other ones that like this one at the bottom has just two panel. If you choose that one, it will still say that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the basic for our purposes though. Now we've got these buttons that say add widgets. And if your shell has a homepage, you can edit it. I was just showing you how to create pages too. I'll show you that little button to edit it. So now you have these widgets on the bottom. This one's a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit smaller. If you go to add widgets, you'll see that you have your choices between system widgets and custom widgets. If you go to your system widgets, 
because you're building this one, you will have to tell it that you want announcements. It's not going to come automatically if you're building a new one. So I wanted to point that out for you here. And we'll click add. On this little side, I'll click add widgets. And now I wanna look at my custom widget. And remember alphabetically, I named it virtual tutoring. So it's at the bottom. Oh, look, it says, this is for my eyes only. So remember that description I put in there? That's how it's going to appear. This one that says tile test lesson nine copy, it doesn't have a description. I just wanted you to see what the difference was. So you decide if you need it or not. And then we'll click add. And I can say, oh, I think I wanted to add one more thing. I wanted to be able to show you that work to do one. And that's in W. Oops, where did I lose? Oh, it's on the next page. I have so many that I have two pages. And so I'm going to click add. Now you'll see what this looks like here and I can click save and close. Guess what? I have one more step that I can't forget if I wanna be able to see it. Because if I go to my homepage now, look, it didn't change. And it's because I missed my step. So that's why I'm not seeing it. And I wanted you to be able to know for sure if you go, oh, it didn't work, then this, this might be why. We'll click our little more button, go back to manage homepages, and I have to choose which page is going to be active. So right now I have a custom homepage with announcements, calendar, Zoom updates. That's what I titled it. I wanna do the custom homepage with virtual tutoring. I'm going to go ahead and click there and I'm going to click apply. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but when I go to my course, my homepage, I will be able to see that now it has changed. I can edit this widget directly from the widget, by the way. So that's helpful now because I've made it. If I need to change it, change a link, anything like that, I can change it right here. I don't have to go through a million different steps. Now, if I've made this page already and now I go, oh, you know what? Here's my, here's my page that I have already. I just need to edit it. Remember this more button? And this, this kind of goes to um, the question that was, um, if your shell already has one, Jennifer was asking, this is how you can edit your page. See where it says edit? You can just click edit and it'll show you your page and now you can add widgets there. So if you like what you came with with your basic one, now you can just add those widgets. And by the way, if you decided, well, um, I wanna change this work to do, I want that to be at the top, you just have to click and drag it to change it. Now I wanted to show you something too. You might uh, remember this, look, wait, work to do was there and now it's not. What's going on? The thing is work to do is for your students. It's not for you, it's for your students. So if I go into my student view, then I'll be able to see it. Ta-da, there it is. This is my sandbox, so there's no work to do. <laughs> but your students will be able to see a display that looks much like that sample that I showed you that had all those assignments that they could click on. What, we're, uh, what we've talked about then is being able to look at these widgets and be able to think about how we can use those widgets. What is a widget? It's an easy link to information. Why should we use widgets? To provide support for those students because we want them to be able to navigate your course. We wanna get them to the experts who can help answer their questions. Those types of reasons for using those widgets. How do I use a widget? Laura, that went really fast. I wasn't following when you did it. This video will be available in a couple of days. There's also another video in Lunch and Learn that is from a couple of semesters ago. There's a coffee talk on home pages and widgets and a five minute sound bite. Now I mention all of these and you say, why do we have so many? Well, Lunch and Learn is about 30 minutes to 45 minutes typically. So we go into these, you know, what is a widget? Why use that widget? How do I use it? We might go into the topic a little bit different level. Coffee talk is usually 15 to 20 minutes. So we're gonna talk a lot about how do I use this tool? How do I make it? So it'll be a little bit different level of conversation and a five minute sound bite, down and dirty, this is what you do. So de depending upon what time commitment you can give or you'd like to be, or the depth you'd like to dive into the topic, you have these choices. I will go ahead and put those links into their for into chat for you though. And then that way you have access to them. I do have a link in there that goes lunch and learns in general and the lunch and learn specific. 
We've got coffee talks in general and then coffee talk specific. And then it gets you straight to that five minute sound bite. So that way you've got all these resources that can help you review what you just saw. Thank you in summary for uh, coming today and for being part of this Lunch and Learn that was based on student voices who let us know what is it that we can do to really support them the best possible. Thank you for coming. Thank you everyone for coming so much. If you want to, uh, if you have more questions or you want more information, please let me know and uh, we'll make sure that we can help support you the best that we can. Thank you.